Guys, this is Mubeen. We are continuing our discussion about the Staphylococcus. The series that we are working on at this time is the diseases caused by Staphylococci. So let's start with our next disease, which is Staphylococcal gastroenteritis. As we have discussed before, the, the pathogen Staphylococci, they produce three kinds of exotoxins. These exotoxins in turn cause three types of diseases. And we talked about it that we have staphylococcal gastroenteritis, that is one, then toxic shock syndrome, that is the other one, and then scalded skin syndrome. All these three are caused by exotoxins. We have already discussed the scalded skin syndrome and toxic shock syndrome. Today we are going to be discussing the pathophysiology and management of gastroenteritis. So staphylococcal contamination of the food usually occurs from the food handlers or chefs or food workers hands and these hands may be contaminated by them touching their nose or someone else who has touched their nose or has staphylococci on their hands and then they touch some place and then this food worker touched that place as well and picked up the staphylococci. Then what happens is if the food storage is inappropriate, let's say the temperature is not correct or the food is stored for a long time, the result of that is that the staphylococci are now going to grow on that food and produce the exotoxin and deposit that on the food itself. Staphylococci produce about 15 kinds of enterotoxins and about 50% of the species of Staphylococci aureus produce these enterotoxins. These enterotoxins, of course, these are exotoxins, but these are also super antigens, just like the other exotoxins. The TSST1 is a super antigen. Similarly, the, the toxin for scalded skin syndrome is a super antigen. And this particular toxin, enterotoxins, are also super antigens. Interestingly, these enterotoxins are heat stable and these are also resistant to the digestive action of the gut enzymes. So these enterotoxins actually survive in the gut to cause their ill effects. Staphylococci produces enterotoxins on meats, carbohydrates, dairy products. So they love to produce these enterotoxins and deposit them on poultry, on uh, other meats, on cheese, on dairy products, and so on. So these are the kind of foods which when we eat can have preformed staphylococcal enterotoxin, which will then cause food poisoning. The incubation time, so once the staphylococci are deposited on the food, the incubation time is anywhere from one to six hours. Some people even say that two to eight hours. So in, during that incubation time, the staphylococci start growing and start depositing the the enterotoxins. One uh, clinical note to keep in mind is that most of the time if a restaurant or a food vending um, place has the staphylococcal outbreak and the food is contaminated then almost everyone who eats that food will become sick. Once these enterotoxins are ingested what they do is they whip the intestine into increased peristalsis and you know that increased peristalsis can cause the feeling of nausea can cause vomiting if it is the retroperistalsis that starts plus diarrhea so these are the kind of symptoms that start appearing at the same time this enterotoxin also can stimulate local nerve receptors which are then going to stimulate the medullary center and also help produce that feeling of nausea and vomiting. Let's look at the clinical presentation. So what happens is that the patient abruptly, suddenly develops nausea and profuse vomiting. Diarrhea is also present or can be present, but normally vomiting and nausea is more significant and severe compared to the diarrhea. Then abdominal pain and sometimes fever. Remember, this is a super antigen. It can actually cause the interleukins to be released, including interleukin-1, which will cause fever. But fever complaint is less common. 
So most common nausea and vomiting, then diarrhea, then abdominal pain and fever. So this episode of nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, diarrhea, fever can continue up to 12 to 24 hours or sometimes even up to 48 hours. Quick note on the management of the uh, gastroenteritis or food poisoning because of staphylococcal enterotoxin. So for management, the basic problem is not to eradicate the staph that is present in the food. It is the preformed toxin that is present in the food. So all we can do is wait for the toxin to be removed or expelled or ejected from the body. Meanwhile, we have to provide supportive therapy. So most important things are number one, antiemetic. So the patient stops having nausea and vomiting and then provide fluid replacements. If patient can take water by mouth, sure, uh, advise them and start having them have water. But if patient cannot, if they are in a situation where they cannot take water at all, as soon as they drink water and they vomit again, in that case, IV fluid replacements will be necessary. If this food was from a vendor, from a restaurant or some um, a contractor who supplied the food in that case you have to culture the food for staff and then you have to make the public health authorities aware of the situation as well so that they can make sure that number one they can talk with the vendor to say hey cleanliness and hygiene is important and number two they can make other people aware and be ready to make sure that there are going to be more patients so that is the gastroenteritis thank you very much and talk to you later